Hey guys, welcome to Made While Medicated Seed to Harvest Stories The Ripper Hayes Story The story starts in November of 2020 and I decided to use some earth boxes for the very first time for this new grow and I was going to grow three auto seeds and it turned out that one of these seeds was a photo period which happened to be Ripper Hayes. So this story will focus on one seed which is Ripper Hayes by Ripper Seeds. I put that in a paper towel soaked in EM1 solution and then put that in a plastic cup and 48 hours later we had a tap root as you can see here we took that seed and tap root and put it in the soil and on Thanksgiving Day we had a sprout day two she was growing some legs already getting bigger day by day this plant ended up being a very vigorous plant and like I said uh, when I first started this grow with the three seeds I thought all three of them were autos I thought Ripper Hayes was an auto and in fact it wasn't I didn't learn this I don't think it was until the other two started flowering that I realized I was like uh oh <laughs> this one's not flowering so um, I looked back at the package and lo and behold it was a photo period so on December 24th here you can see I actually had to start topping uh, this plant I topped it several times but she just continued to grow and expand outward and uh, fantastic plant just loved growing it Look at the look at the uh, nodes on this in here. We got our initial one down here. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's one there. Now, if I was cloning right now, that would be a, a fantastic clone. But so Ripper Hayes. Done and taken quite a bit off. I mean, that's a lot. I also wanted to show you guys these knuckles. Look at these. I haven't done anything to this plant, and this is how this plant is grown naturally on its own. I haven't done anything. You can see the structure. In the Ripper Haze, um, I actually had to bend the top down today. And that top was up about up about here, a little bit of course we have our Ripper Haze over here, which we found out is not an auto and it's a photo period. And uh, it's been under 12-12 light now for a week. So we're trying to force it to flower. Uh, so far nothing yet, but uh, Big trunk to get the patch with this big plant, as you can see. But we got it in the back, and uh, the other day I broke it right there. Oh, you guys can see it. Got a piece of tape on it. Here we have before I'm putting on the whole patch. So you can still see some nutrients on the soil. I think it could use a recharge and some EM1. You can see now the Bokashi I just put down in there. Now I'll go ahead and spray it with the EM1 and recharge. I just have my sprayer here. Go in and just about killed me, but I got it. She, she's pretty much trimmed up a little bit now. A little bit better than she was before. Got some airflow going. And I did some thinning on that one, so we just went in and basically cut the top back just a little bit, not all the way down, just to slow it down a little bit to thin it. Draining it, topping it, draining it, <laughs> cleaning it up. 
and so on. Rupert Hayes. And uh, this girl is, like I said, a photo period. Uh, we're on 12-12 light cycle, and she's still getting bigger. I've topped it once already. Um, she's being trained as much as I can. She's got a really wicked stock on her. Okay, Underneath here, you'll see, you know, I've been cutting back a lot, and it's actually not as dense as it looks from up top. Um, but this thing has some really large fan leaves on it right now, you know. Um, but again, I'm just trying to cut it back and keep it small. Beginning of week eight. And you can see how full we're getting in here. This girl over here, the Ripper Haze, is just day 55. End of week eight. And here, here we have the Ripper Haze, which, uh, as you guys know, if you've been watching, it's an aggressive plant and spilling out all over the place. They got it coming out the straw net every which way. You can see here, it's flowering. And notice the leaves on this plant. They are very typical of Stativa looking very sharp, thin leaves. Look at those. It's drinking two gallons of water a day. Over here, which is now well into flowering. We have lots of Young, fresh little buds everywhere. We have a lot of different races like this on here. And I'm gonna go ahead and move some of those and bring this canopy down just a little bit. There we go, beginning of week nine. We're gonna feed the soil today. We're gonna add a little bit of, uh, build the soil on top of this. Taking up all of the back room right now. I just tucked one of these down and I wanted to video this before I cut more down, but um, I'm using my clips to bring these down a little bit. And I want to see what happens here. I kind of pinch that bud a little bit. And I want to see if it shoots out of the air. We'll see. But it's it's bent down and um, We'll, we'll get some more of these down in the back, at least these ones up here. I want to bring them down to at least meet this other canopy.
and uh, we're down to these three plants. Haze, which is enormous comparatively. And when we look down underneath here, I was amazed what I found with the roots coming out of the top of the soil. I'm not sure if they were looking for food or if the box itself is root bound. I've also maintained a well around the stock, which is to keep Bokashi away from the stock. Um, and then if we look at the other earth box, we can see the soil over there it doesn't have any of the roots like this one does. So I'm thinking the girl was uh, pretty hungry. So I decided to put some uh, soil over the roots um, to protect them from any nutrients that I'm going to be putting on or bokashi or anything like that. And I'm using soil from Charlotte's box. Um, there was lots of unused cow manure and visible bokashi on the top of that box. So I just mounted the soil on top of the roots to protect them and to give them some more nutrients. Uh, they should get the nutrients out of that soil. Uh, and the bokashi that I'm putting on and spreading it around will help activate that. I also sprayed on my EM1 and recharge solution. Hey guys, day 79, just a quick check-in. Wanted to show you guys the Ripper Haze and how it's responded to those nutrients on the top soil. Everything kind of greened up and she's really <laughs> filling out quite a bit. I have a few leaves here and there, like those ones right there that are two leaves, I think, right there that are curling. It's February 17th. It is the last day of week 12. Let's look at day 84 here. And we're taking a look at the Ripper Haze and its trichome development and its bud development. We have buds here in about mid-flower, so they're fairly immature as well. And we're also kind of taking a look here at any nutrient deficiencies or anything like that. So a few days later, I went ahead and trimmed up the Ripper Hay. Well, it is day 90, the end of week 12, and this is what things are looking like now in the tent. Ripper Hay is showing a little bit of curl on some of the leaves and curling going on like right there. You can see how that's curling up, but it's not everywhere, so it's only on a few here and there. This is a good example right here. My uh, hands starting to go around it like that. So, um, like I said, day 90. So it's about, oh, I'd say maybe day 40 of flowers. So we still probably got another, you know, 20 days to go. So we still have a ways to go. So we're gonna do some top dressing tomorrow on this girl. And I uh, gave her some uh, drink last night of PM1 and recharge, but uh, let's take a look down underneath the canopy here and uh, we can see the structure of this girl and uh, how she started originally. So it's just this little tiny plant and it's turned into this massive, I mean, that's a massive um, tree here. And you can see how I've ended up having to bend. This is the main stalk here. Uh, so bent up. And this is where it got topped. And I took both of these off in different directions. This one got topped again, you can see here. Down here, the soil itself, we remember what the roots looked like before. And well, they're not as prominent as they were before, but they're, they're back. Alright guys, I wanted to show you the soil, I'm going to amend it, and you can see, it was uh, got a lot of roots, again, mostly you might be able to see some small little creepy crawly things in there, but that's healthy. Uh, 
happened to mound it up so high now, but uh, we're a few weeks away, so we're going to do that. We'll just keep mounding it up and letting the root go. We can see here we get the Bukashi on. We got it mounted. See this? And we're in here today looking at our Ripper Haze, who is growing along so nicely still. Um, before, I told you we had some leaf curl and some of those leaves are still at the same point as they were before, honestly. And uh, there's no more from that. She's looking rather full, I know. I haven't been in here doing any trimming I should get in here I got some yellow leaves down in there but uh, she's starting to get pretty fat and sticky and uh, the buds are starting to get pretty large um, some of these are fattening up all the way up through some of these in the back here you guys can see here these close-up shots but yeah they still have a little ways to go um, you'd think coming in here to week 14 would be a little further along but she's still doing well and uh, after the last top dress I've noticed you know, a difference in the plant. It looks a little happier and greener and there's a lot more leaves. Again, like I have to get in here and clean some of this up, but I'm telling you guys, it's almost impossible. If you look at this here, this is one of the main branches that I had come off here. And because I bent this down, all of these other buds came off that in themselves are big, if you see my hand. <laughs> so these are big and they all have these small little leaves, which honestly, I've tried to get in there to cut some of these out, but um, it's pretty tough. Underneath here, you can see she's still doing pretty well and um, we know that we've mounded it up quite a bit here, as you can see. So we have quite a mounding dirt. Let's take a look. See what we can see under here. And you can see some of the roots are starting to come through again. So she's eating, but eating a little bit more slowly. Ripper haze is still going strong. And uh, the buds just keep stacking and building. And I can't really keep ahead of the, the leaves it's uh, some of the leaves are in the buds uh, so densely it's uh, I really can't even get in there with scissors without you know I don't want to hurt the buds at all so I've done some thinning out um, yesterday and uh, got a little bit more um, definite channel through here yesterday there these were like completely filled in and so now at least we get some air movement through there and down through <clears throat> but this ripper haze has all of the uh, fans going on it we have one up there this one this one over here uh, we got one underneath it and this one up in the back as well so Plenty of air movement. <clears throat> we'll see how much longer she goes. Hey guys, it is now the end of week 15 for Ripper Hayes. And she's starting to show some signs that she's thinking about finishing up. 
some leaves are starting to show a little sign here and there. Some tip burn, some tip curl. Uh, we've had some yellowing, some brown spots here and there. But 16 weeks, uh, we're at about eight weeks, nine, well, it'll be nine weeks of flower now. So, uh, another week, we'll be at 10 weeks, so she's really getting close. I don't really have any larvae type buds, honestly, they're, even the ones that are down inside the canopy are making some fairly good size nugs. Not much is going on. This is day 106 of the grow, day 57 of flower. I've done a little bit of trimming here. Um, some of the leaves are starting to yellow and starting to fade. You can see some of the tip fade on some of those. One, but um, midweek here um, on day 108, uh, this is day 59 of flower, so a couple days later. Um, I started giving her just plain water at this point. Uh, we don't need to flush these, but, uh, you know, um, because they're earth boxes. But I think it's probably got enough nutrients in the soil to keep it through uh, the rest of its cycle. And uh, then on the last day here, which is day 112, uh, it's, it's, uh, day 63 of flower, you can see how thick these are starting to get now. Uh, they're really bulking up. I keep plucking off the yellow leaves when I see them, trying to make as much space as I can. I know they look really thick um, with some of these leaves on here, but I just can't get them off. Um, they're in there, embedded in pretty thick. But you can see how big some of these are getting. This one here, I can barely fit my hand around it. Yeah, guys, day 66 of Ripper Haze. Still fading away, but it is starting to get uh, hard, dense nugs. What did I count? 116, I think. Uh, day 73 of flower, I believe. I can't remember off front this all if I'm wrong. But she's starting to show some signs of a little bit uh, like they're done. And the buds look really good and they're getting rather hard. For Ripper. And Ripper Haze is now in day 70 of flower. She might be on her last week, but uh, Buds have thickened up even more this week. Take a look at some of these here. Compare some to my hands. So they're really big and thick, you know, this big around. Well, guys, the day is finally here, and the Ripper Haze is gonna come down today. So we're gonna start taking some of the larger fan leaves off after we cut. The branches off. Um, this plant's so big that we'll probably go uh, branch by branch on this one. I checked the trichomes. Um, I cut off a lower bud the other day and we had clear to cloudy on it and now we have uh, amber tips on a lot of these top colas and the lower, lower colas are around cloudy so I'm going to take it today. And uh, she looks really nice. Take one last look at it. See how nice it's finished out. These are really big colas to kind of give you a comparison. You know, let me put my hand in. So you can see they're really dense, hard. Every nug is really big. So we'll see how much we get off this, but I have a feeling uh, we're gonna get many ounces. All right, guys, here we go. 
Gonna take her one branch at a time. Gonna check them out. Gonna weigh them. Gonna hang them. And look at them. Make sure there's no problems. Make sure there's no bud rot or anything like that. No bugs or pests. And there wasn't. Everything was just perfect. The bud structure was really nice. The buds were tight and compact. Um, everything I weighed wet and we also weighed everything dry. Um, I'll give you guys all the stats towards the end of the video. But I just wanted you guys to enjoy the rest of me taking down and hanging up the Ripper Haze. guys it's been six days since I've hung up the ripper haze and uh, it's drying really well it's pretty crispy at this point most of it and uh, I've trimmed one smaller branch and it seems like the smaller branches might be ready and when we talk about smaller branches, we're talking about, you know, a branch like this that's, you know, fairly small uh, versus, you know, one like this that still has quite a bit of buds compacted in there. Some of these are loaded with buds in there. So uh, I'm going to try and do like that now it's going along I got a little tally sheet over here that we're gonna just kind of scratch on I'll just kind of putting in what the dry weight is and then as I cut stuff off I'll start measuring the flower and the trim and the stem and we'll keep a running tally of that as long as I remember here's one last look at a bud hanging up on the string and after six days, eh, I believe they were pretty close to being done. So I went ahead and took down some of the smaller to medium sized buds. Went ahead and trimmed those up. And after grinding them up, determined that I could probably use another day um, on the larger ones. These ones are actually quite perfect. So I let those go and jarred them up. This is the next day, uh, the seventh day of drying. And uh, these were actually, I think, right around perfect as far as the drying consistency was concerned. Not too dry, not too wet. Uh, when you grind it up, it has a nice little tumble to it. So uh, this trimming took me pretty much all day from the time I got up in the morning till right around supper time, I guess, maybe eight hours of trimming or so but it wasn't too bad the nice part was not finding any mold mildew or pests and all the buds were really nice nugs so I'm looking forward to enjoying them so the next day you can see everything is jarred up and some of it settled a little bit uh, but all in all it's a pretty good haul. In fact, it was the largest plant I ever grew. Happened to be the first earth box plant I ever grew. I plan on growing ripper haze again and seeing if we can get the same, if not more, next time. Ripper haze ended up smelling a little piney and fresh, and it smoked really nice. No harshness at all. I'm still really enjoying it. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the show, don't forget to subscribe.